Hey guys, how's it going? Today what I'm going to be talking about a little bit about sighting in your rifle at the range and the correct way to do it. And I know you're already thinking out there, yeah, he knows the correct way to do it, so he must know everything. Not necessarily, but I do this a lot, and um, I over and over again, uh, the easiest way to do this, there's several different ways to do this, but I'm going to talk about the easiest way for me to do it, and probably the easiest way for you to do it. So first off, a lot of guys every year go out, and gals, uh, for the first time of the year, you know, late summer, early fall, and they want to sight in the rifle, or they go out and they buy a new one, put a scope on it, and they want to get that thing sighted in and get it shooting great again. Probably the number one issue I see in most of these cases where the customer comes to me and says, hey, I can't get this thing sighted in, what's going on, what's the problem? A lot of the times it ends up being something loose, either the scope mounts, the uh, scope bases, uh, the rings. If all that stuff is in good shape, the other thing we start to look at as to why you can't get your rifle zeroed or sighted in is how are you doing it. So I'll go into that in a minute, but first I'm going to start out with different types of different ways to get started here. So we're starting with a blank slate here. So we're assuming that the rifle has been properly set up, the scope has been properly mounted, everything's torqued to specs. The most rings and bases now come with um, torque specs that they should be at now uh, and they vary based on the manufacturer and the size of screws and all that stuff but um, if it's proper we're talking about if this thing is properly put together and where we go from there all right so there's several different ways to bore sight a rifle a shotgun whatever you're bore sighting and of course they make several different types of bore sighters to do this. They make uh, optical ones that will that mount on a rod that stick inside your bore. Not in favor of those because the retention pin that fits inside your bore actually is a spring-loaded pin and it will rub up against your rifling so I'm not a fan of those. There are laser bore sighters and they come in a couple different kinds. They come in ones that chamber into your chamber and they shoot down the bore onto your target, sight in from there. They also make laser bore sighters that fit in the end of your barrel, usually with rubber O-rings that go inside the bore. Uh, those are okay, but um, the one I use most often when I can't do it the way I prefer is one of these. And this is, uh, I think this one's Bushnell. Leopold used to make these, but this is an optical one. And if you look inside of there, when it's mounted on your barrel it'll be a little grid line and it will correlate with where it's approximately supposed to be uh, bore sighted and this is just a magnetic one so this one sticks on the end of the muzzle uh, I can show you here even a stainless steel one like that it'll stick on the end of the muzzle because it's a very strong powerful magnet and uh, these pretty much do no harm so they're a good option to use if you want to do that and the key thing to remember with all of these different bore sighting techniques is that they're just going to get you a ballpark. It's not going to zero you in at 100, 200, whatever you want to be at. It's not going to get you exactly where you want to be. All it's doing, the whole purpose of bore sighting is to get you in a general area at X amount of yards. Usually most people bore sight. You can bore sight anywhere from 25 to about 50 yards is a pretty common place to start. Uh, and then once you can kind of zero down your range at that yardage, then you can usually take it out to 100, and then at 100 you can, you know, fine tune it, and then you can go from there. So the best way that I like to bore sight is I like to, if possible, look directly down the bore with your eye. And this is the way I've done it since I began building and working with rifles, and it's a pretty simple foolproof way to do it and you can do it just about anywhere as long as your rifle is able to do it. So here's a rifle and the trick with doing this is to get this thing mounted on something that's where it's not going to move and it's going to let you see what you want to see. The other thing to remember, not all these rifle stocks, the comb on them, you cannot always bore sight down your bore based on how big your comb is so you'll have to look at that. And things like lever actions and shotguns, 
you'd probably be better off with like the magnetic bore sighter if you're putting a scope on one of those things. So as far as rests and what type of rest to use, there are several different options out there again. Uh, probably one of the easiest ones that most people have is a bipod. And here is a bipod. This is a Harrison, Harrison bipod. A lot of people have these on their rifles or um, variations of them. That would probably be the most common type of bipod if you're really fancy and you got a really nice rifle. You could get something like this. This is an MDT psych pod, and these things are very adjustable, but they're all, always, also I should say, extremely sturdy, and they don't move a lot. When you get them where you want them to be, um, they're pretty sturdy. So that's an option, but that's most people don't have that. The other option for the average guy would be you can get some sort of a sandbag or a lead shot bag if you happen to do stuff with that or any sort of a just a solid semi-malleable surface that you can put it on. A bag of sand would be the most common thing to use. The other thing, they make lead sleds. Lead sleds are extremely good for doing this because you're basically setting the rifle in place and theoretically it shouldn't move or it shouldn't move a lot when you fire it, but it's a good solid rest to put that thing into. The other thing they make is they do make cradles for rifles and other various types. Uh, they make ones that set either on the bench or on the ground. They also make ones on tripods. The tripod you could use but it's a little trickier because they're not quite as stable and you have to have the mounting accessories and all that stuff to go along with that. So um, bipods, bags, they're pretty common things to use. So the trick with this thing is, so when you're bore sighting them, I'll show you on this rifle. So this is a custom rifle that I built. Take the bolt out. And so you get this thing lined up, set it on your bench. And set it in your either on your bipods. And what, you, you're, what you're looking for is you're trying to find something. I would start looking through your bore and you try to find something that has good contrast to where you can kind of point, pinpoint something. So <clears throat> a lot of times at our shooting range, you can look at a target. If there's like a white piece of paper with a black dot on it, that's a good thing to look for. Or even the crotch of a tree where you can visibly see that. Um, there's all sorts of things you can look at. As long as you can look down the bore and find what it is that you're looking for, you, you can do this method. So I'll go over it here on my gun and then I'll go through it on a board here. Set my bolt down so I don't drop it. <clears throat> so your rifle's in your steady position and what you do is you get down the end of the bore and you look down the end of the bore. And the goal when you're doing that is first off you want to see what you're looking at and pinpoint you know if you get that black dot on a piece of paper you want to get that in the center of the bore. And the trick with getting that in the center of the bore is you also want to have a concentric ring of rifling around your bore at the end. So you want to try and get sighted down that as close as you can see. And then once you got that set up and you can see where you're aiming at down there through the bore, then you move up to your scope and you see where that is on the crosshairs. And depending on what yardage you're zeroing it at, uh, it'll depend on where you want to put the crosshairs. But generally, you kind of want to center it up. The bore centered on your dot, let's say, and then your crosshairs centered on your dot again. So when I mentioned looking through the bore to try and figure out uh, where you're at as far as bore sighting. So, <clears throat> so when we're looking through the bore, this would be our bore. So this is the back side of the chamber. This is what you can see. Hopefully you can see it. <laughs> and then when we're looking through the bore, you'll see the end of the barrel. And then in here is all the rifling. And the idea here, say you're aiming at your piece of paper with your little black dot. The idea is trying to get this centered, of course, little black dot in the center of the bore 
and then this rifling concentric all the way around here. So when I mean concentric, I mean an even width all the way around. If you're looking at it like this, so if you're bore, if you're not concentric and you're oblong here, this is not going to help you out with your bore sighting. This is what you want to get. This hopefully will be centered in the center of your bore. So after you've done that, you go out to about 25, maybe 50 yards. Get however big a piece of paper you want to get, a foot, a sheet of paper, whatever. Fire one shot and see where that lands. So then the next thing you want to do is you set your rifle back up. You see where you hit. You put your scope back on your black dot where you originally aimed. And then as long as your rifle is nice and steady, you look down the scope and you crank it up or down, left or right, while the trick is to not move your rifle, and you want to move your crosshair back down over the bullet hole. Another question people ask me is why when we're bore sighting at 25 or 50 yards, do we want a, our bullet to impact below where our crosshairs are aiming? Well, that's a good question. Say this is our target, here's our circle we want to hit and ideally if we're at 25 yards we want to be maybe about an inch low if we're at 50 yards we want to be maybe three quarter or half inch low so why is that good question as you may or may not know when you fire a rifle here's our rifle barrel this bullet path is going I can't draw straight but it's going to be relatively straight and towards the end it's going to drop off. That's an approximation of course. Now when we add our scope into there, that's my scope, the line of sight for our scope is above where we're shooting. So let's redraw this, our uh, bullet path here a little bit and our line of sight. On most rifles the distance from the bore, center line of the bore, to the center line of your scope is approximately, depending on what type of scope, bases, all that good stuff, you know most rifles are about an inch and a half give or take. Some are a little more, some are a little less. So <clears throat> at this point right here, right out of the muzzle, we're probably about an inch and a half high. So if we shot something, if we shot a piece of paper, our target will be here and our bullet hole will be here. So let's go back to our bullet path and our line of sight. Here's our target. Here's where we want to aim. So our bullet path I mean, at this short distance, it's going to be relatively flat. We've got a little curve. Most of the drop is right at the end. Our line of sight to hit that is going to come in down at an angle. And right, you know, at 100 yards, it's probably going to go under it just a tad, and it's going to hit that. So here's 100 yards. Here's 50 yards. At 50 yards, our line of sight is higher than our bullet path. At 100 yards, they converge. So, inch and a half to zero, we're about three quarters of an inch difference there, give or take. How about 25? Well, at 25, we're going to be about in between there somewhere. So, we might be an inch to an inch and a quarter give or take at 25 yards. So this is the reason why when we're bore sighting at 25 or 50 yards we want our bullet hole to be below our target. If we hit this number at 50 yards theoretically we should be pretty close if not spot on at 100 yards. 
So this changes a little bit, of course, you're saying, well, these things arc and, you know, you got a, you know, parabola and all that stuff. Yeah, you do. Okay, so let's change it. And say we're shooting at 100 yards, this thing isn't dropping much. So let's say, let's take it out to 500 yards. So at 500 yards, things change a little bit as far as our line of sight and our bullet path. And this is kind of going beyond, but we'll, we'll talk about it anyways. So at 500 yards, our sight picture is still going to be right at our bullseye. That doesn't change. But our bullet path is going to be an arc. So we're going to shoot, it's going to go up, and then it's going to come down. And that's not a perfect, you know, this is relatively straight. But you get the idea. It arcs in there. So that's at long distance. So that's where you get that if people are asking about that. But within 25 to 50 yards, yeah, our bullet hole is going to hit below where we're aiming because our bullet path is below our line of sight. So at that point, if you want to take another shot, you can. Or if you want to go out a little further and try it, as long as you're confident that you moved your turrets in the right direction. Take it out to 100, shoot, see where it lands. Repeat the process. If you're off a little bit, go back to where you're aimed, get your rifle in a solid spot, and then crank your crosshairs back down to the bullet hole. And at this point is when I usually, I usually don't do a lot of that other stuff, but at this point you usually can shoot a group and see where you're at. When we're shooting and zeroing in, here's our bullseye. We're aiming here, but we take a shot and we hit here. So this is where I get back to, you have to reset up your rifle the way it was, in a solid rest, and if you can put your crosshairs back on here, you dial your scope right, say two minutes, and then down two minutes, and now your crosshair should be on the bullet hole. So then you take shot two, and if you did your job, it should be bullseye. So when I'm bore sighting, I've done this so much that I'm pretty good. I can usually get on a piece of paper at 100 yards when I bore sight between the, the bore and the scope. If I can get a good solid rest for the rifle, I can look down it and I can usually get on a piece of paper at 100 yards. And from there, I can dial the scope in and I usually shoot one or two, maybe three, shoot a three shot group, see where it lands. Because that three shot group in a rifle like this should be a tiny little group and it will give you a very accurate depiction of where that crosshair is aiming at versus where your barrel is hitting. So the other thing to take into account when doing this is when you do fire, you want to make sure that you have a solid position on your rifle. And what I mean by that is you want to try to be as consistent from shot to shot as possible. So if we're here, we want to try and keep our butt pad in the same spot on our shoulder. And when we drop our head down, we want to try to be in the same location, forward and backwards, head tilt, all that good stuff, and try to be as accurate as possible as far as your positioning of the rifle. And with things like bipods, there's preloading of bipods, you gotta, that's a whole different story, but the, the idea behind sighting these rifles in and bore sighting them is getting consistency and you, as a shooter, need to be as consistent as possible. <clears throat> That's where a lot of guys like the lead sleds, because the lead sled takes out the U factor as the shooter. Another factor that I'll go into as far as why people may not get the rifle to shoot where they want it to shoot while they're doing this process is you need to take your time sometimes. If you're shooting a sporter weight profile barrel and you're shooting like a big large 7mm or a 300 wind mag, you need to let that barrel cool down and not let that barrel temperature affect 
your shooting strings. What I mean by that is you take your sighter shot, your initial shot, you move your scope, you take a second shot, okay, it's pretty close to where I want it. I think I'm going to go from 25 to 100. So then you go up to 100, and your barrel, two shots with a sporter weight barrel should start to be getting warm, but maybe wait a few minutes, and then shoot and see where it lands. And then from there do your fine tuning, and then wait another five minutes, and then shoot three shots. All right, so a good example of this was this last fall I was out uh, sighting in a few rifles and I was showed up and a few guys were there, a guy and his buddy, and this guy had a 338 Lapua mag and he was trying to get this thing sighted in at, I don't know, 150 or 200 yards or whatever he was doing, I can't remember. But I remember sitting there as I was getting all my stuff ready because uh, it's kind of a one lane thing so it was one guy at a time. <clears throat> but I was getting ready and I heard these guys just saying, taking a shot and saying, oh, now it's high, taking another shot, oh, it's three inches low, taking another shot, oh, it's th six inches to the right. And they were shooting at like a pie plate and then, you know, like the fourth shot, oh, I don't even know where that one went. And um, I walked up to these guys when they were kind of in between, you know, kind of messing around with things and in between shooting. And I said, hey, you know, I'm a, I'm a gunsmith, and I, you know, do you mind if I give you a little help and try and help you out here? And, and the guy's like, oh, yeah, sure, absolutely, you know, if you could, you know, help me out here. And, and, I, and I asked him, I said, well, you know, I, could, I can shoot it for you, and I can see, I can let you know if it's, you know, if it's the gun or if it's something else, and we can go from there. The first thing I asked him, uh, you know, was everything set up right? Was everything tight? And he checked everything, and he said, yeah, yeah, all that stuff's good. And I said, okay, well, you've shot it quite a bit here in the last five minutes, so let's let it sit for 10, 15 minutes, and then we'll move up to 100 yards, we'll set it up, and we'll take a shot, and we'll see where it lands. So we did that, and I took a shot, and it landed, I don't know, three inches away from bullseye at like it's 5 o'clock. And I told him, I said, well, it's, you know, it's in there, but... So then we cranked it in and we, we moved, you know, over to the bullseye. And he said, well, I want it sighted zeroed at 200 and we were at 100. So I said, okay, well, we'll, we'll aim it a little high at 100. And then he should be pretty dang close at 200. And so at that point I said, well, let me shoot a group and see where it's shooting and how it's shooting. If the rifle is grouping, because I said, you know, sometimes, you know, several different factors, the barrel could be dirty, this, that, whatever else. And so I proceeded to shoot a, it couldn't have been more than a half inch three shot group at 100 yards with this big 338 Lapool mag. And the guy's like, just shocked that that rifle could do that. And he's like, well, I knew it shot good, but I just, you know. So a couple things were going on there. Uh, number one, the guy was shooting it way too fast, uh, shot after shot, and with and it had a pretty decent sized contour barrel on that rifle, but that's burning at like 120, 130 grains of powder through that thing. That's a ton of powder getting burned through that bore, and it gets hot relatively quick. So, he was shooting it way too fast. When I first touched the barrel, with his permission of course, it was so hot you couldn't touch it. So that's way too hot to be zeroing in a rifle. Uh, the second thing, he was shooting off a bipod, but he wasn't preloading the bipod or anything else, and his form shot to shot wasn't consistent. So, just a few little things that, you know, and I, I get it, you know, not everybody shoots every day, every other day, and off the bipod and all that stuff. So, not everybody's attuned to um, positioning a rifle to set up where it's going to shoot little groups if it's capable of doing that. But it's just an example of, you know, a few things that were not set up properly when he was going through this process and he was burning through a lot of money and ammo and getting nowhere with it real quick. So I think total I shot six rounds through his rifle and they all went where I wanted him to go. So it was a nice shooting rifle and it ended up after that he was happy and the thing worked and he was happy and you know most guys uh, when they're setting up these rifles it's usually just one or two shots hopefully just one shot when you're out there hunting but you know once in a while you need a follow-up so 
you uh, you know if you can get one or two good shots off that's all you need most of the time so talking about rifles that you can't always see down the bore here is an example so this is a uh, another custom rifle that I built but this rifle has an MDT ACC chassis which is a really nice chassis however the one thing I don't like about it and there's not really a lot of great ways around it is the cheek riser here and the butt pad get in the way of two things cleaning and then if you ever want to bore sight it bore sight it's not a big deal this stuff all comes off pretty quick but every time you clean it I gotta take it off too so but if you look down the center line of the bore you gotta take this stuff off to do that so that's an example of one that you cannot directly see down the bore without doing something else. On cue. Well, I hope that helped some of you guys out. And remember, you know, there's, there's not just one way to do all this stuff. There's always several different ways to do it. And you're more than welcome to take my opinion or leave it. Uh, leave a comment below. Let me know how you bore sight your rifle. Or if you got another great tip or technique that I'm not aware of. Who knows? Maybe you know. I don't. But um, I hope you guys got some from that and I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you like it, be sure to smash the like button below, comment, let me know what you're thinking, and subscribe with the notification that little goes ding. And uh, you'll get more great videos like this, more, e more to come in the future. So, all right, till next time, stay safe in your machines, shoot safe. See you guys next time. Thanks for watching.